honeybees are the great unsung hero of the Australian landscape. While they busily go about their business of foraging, collecting pollen and producing honey, they are also helping to produce the foods we eat every day. In fact, 70% of what goes into our mouths relies on pollination, a service these winged insects provide for free. Bees are just so important to our well-being. Things that are immediately obvious are the palm fruits and the stone fruits and berries and, and things like that, but things that aren't so immediately obvious are, are beef uh, because they need lucerne and clover and, and all those crops need pollinating with bees as well. Sadly, honeybee populations around the world have crashed and not enough is known about why. Potential threats include varroa mite and other pathogens, air and water contamination, pesticides, extreme weather, hive management or a combination of these and other factors. When bees are, are out there on our crops, they're exposed to different agricultural chemicals, the different kinds of food, the pollen and the nectar that they collect on crops. And those things will affect whether or not a bee is going to make it back to the hive and whether or not the hive is going to grow or shrink. Australia is actually special in a few important ways. One of the most significant is that we don't have the varroa mite, that's one of the biggest bee diseases around the world. And what's happened in America and more recently in New Zealand is the varroa mites arrived and it spread very rapidly and had a huge impact particularly on feral bees and has a pretty big impact also on the managed bees. Hopefully we can learn things here that we can export around the world to help people everywhere manage their bees better. Currently Australia is free from colony collapse disorder and varroa mite but the risk of them arriving is very real. Oh, catastrophic. Absolutely catastrophic. I was in the UK when Varroa arrived there and I had 150 hives as a hobby and I went down to 25 hives in the first year. We lost 80% of the bees in the UK in the first year it was discovered. A new CSIRO-led research program is looking into how to maintain honeybee productivity on farms in the event of a bee population crash, as well as learn about what is driving the global collapse in wild populations. And to do that requires technology on a miniature scale. These tags measure just a quarter of a centimetre in length and are being fitted to the backs of bees to monitor their movement. The sensors act like an e-tag on your car and record when the insect passes a data logger. That information is sent remotely to a central location where researchers can then model the insect's behaviour and how it interacts with its environment. Well, without bees we don't have apples and we've seen in the footage before where the, the bees have not been active because of bad weather and, uh, and there's no apples there. So, the bees are very important. Now, this is really a global initiative we're talking about here, and by that we mean we've got some great researchers in Australia, but we've also got collaborators around the world. The unique approach of the global initiative is to provide the same technology, the same experimental protocols, in a very collaborative approach, working from microchips up to the cloud, where the data then is being shared and analysed by scientists around the world to make discoveries and understand the impact that bees are suffering from different stressors. We really believe that if you can bring those scientists together with beekeepers and, and industry, we can have some really important outcomes. So we hope to solve one of the largest problems we have today in the world. It is about the, the threat to food, but many other aspects on the landscape and the role that pollinators have in the landscape. The big picture is we need a strong beekeeping industry and we need successful farmers and together they can help produce the food we need now and into the future.